I guess it was just a matter of time before I recorded a video about Mansef. Assalamualaikum guys. This Ramadan we have eaten a lot of Mansef, which is only fitting because it's the national Jordanian dish and it is a real symbol of hospitality, generosity, community spirit. I tried to do a Ramadan vlog for the entire experience of preparing the mansaf from the early morning until finally assembling it at the end of the day. It turned out to be a really busy day and I didn't get time to talk through what I was doing. So bear with me and I will tell you all about mansaf and even the stories behind it. All the research that I could find online will be in this video here. Atam? Atam? Hold on, hold on. Should we go to Tater's? Yeah. Yeah? We're gonna yeah. go help, help Tater cook iftar? Yeah. Yeah? You gonna help? Yeah. Okay, should we go? Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> Asalaamu As Alaikum, guys. We are just arriving at my mother in law's and we are going to help set up for our first uh, invitation, food invitation for Ramadan. As you can see, we cooked 13 kg of meat for our 26 guests in these pressure cookers on an open fire inside the kitchen. This saved a lot of time because otherwise you would be cooking the meat all day long if you just did it in a traditional sense on, on the stove. Then we come to my mother-in-law's delicious Jameed Mansaf sauce. Basically every kind of dairy that you can imagine goes into this. So we've got the yogurt, the shanina, and we've got, of course, the all-important Jameed. And this one is from Karak, so it's extra special. That is meant to be the best, highest quality Jameed that you can get in Jordan. So you mix everything into a big pot, and then you also add some eggs, which I failed to film, eggs, uh, corn flour, and of course, water. From the research that I have found, Making mansaf and the process of making it um, is something that is handed down through the generations. So it felt like a bit of an honor for my mother-in-law to be showing me how to make this. Of course, with any traditional kind of recipe, there isn't a set um, list of quantities. So it's all done by eye, it's done by experience and by intuition, and I am definitely not ready to make mansaf by eye. And then the stirring begins, and you stir, and you stir, and you stir. And this is to stop the yogurt sauce from separating while it's cooking. <gasps> Adam, what do you have? Hi. Hi. You survived. Adam, you have ice cream. Twinkle, twinkle. I like it. That's not where you put. Oh, oh boy, yeah. Do you want to cover the lacquer? You cover the ice cream. Yeah. Traditionally, way back when, sage bread was used instead of rice. So now we put this very thin whole wheat bread underneath the dish and on top of the dish at the end. But traditionally, we didn't use rice. And if before rice there was bulgur wheat, and before bulgur wheat there was nothing, there was just this bread. From what I have read, in the 1970s it became very unpopular to use this very th thin shrap bread, and people just stopped using it altogether, um, until it obviously has come back into popularity. Before the mid-1940s bulgur wheat had become popular, and then later on rice superseded it. And in the early 1960s, roasted almonds were introduced and a little bit later, pine nuts. And also traditionally, the meat and the, the rice and everything would be cooked in these huge cauldrons on open fires outside. And these cauldrons would hold up to like 25 kgs. So that's a huge quantity of mansa. Also during that time when they were cooking in these big cauldrons, they were also using copper platters instead of the um, aluminium ones that we're familiar with today. And then from my research, later on in the 20th century, Janid was introduced. Oh, oh my God. So next to the Mansaf story. Again, this is all from the internet and all from word of mouth, so be easy on me in the comment section. So Mansaf is originally a Jordanian 
dish it's from this region even before it was Jordan. It dates back to the 9th century BC and the reign of King Mesha of Moab, which was um, a kind of an area around Tafila, Karak and Dead Sea kind of area. And the Moabs were constantly at battle with the Israelites across the border and they were just constantly being defeated by them. So eventually King Mesha was victorious over the Israelites and he documented his success in the Moabite stone, which you may have heard of. And the stone reads something like, our success over the Israelites is because of our deity, which was called Chemosh, I think. And this stone is now in the Louvre in France. Did I say that right? I don't know. It's, it's there in France and it's a very important artifact. So to celebrate his victory, Mesha not only made this incredible stone, he also went about building a load of new structures all over the region and he also decided to unite his people from the Zerka River up to Man and um, with this celebratory dish, Mansaf. And the reason that this united the people was that it was a symbol of resistance against the Israelites um, by mixing the meat with the dairy products, so cooking the meat in the dairy products, which of course isn't kosher. So it was a political stance against the Israelites, but it was also an opportunity to unite his people around one shared dish. However, I also read an academic article that said that the earliest records of Mansaf, or the earliest that it's known that Mansaf existed, was with the Bedouins, who did not use a yogurt sauce. Instead, they just cooked the meat in a clarified butter, or in a broth. However, it kind of makes sense that the Bedouins were using yogurt sauce to cook their meat in because ultimately their main food source was sheep and they produce meat and milk. Ready? Rice. When you buy mansaf from, from outside, from restaurants and things, for good quality mansaf, you're looking at about 100 dinars and above for about five kg of meat. And that's high quality meat, high quality gym meat. You also can go right down the spectrum and you can pay like 20, 25 dinars for low quality um, platter of maybe one or two kg. But it all depends on quality and quantity, of course. Something else I heard which I thought was like mind blowing was that in Aqaba, they eat mansaf with fish. Please tell me if that's true or not. I'm really interested to know what fish cooked in Jameed sauce would taste like. So here you can see, taken on my phone, very artistically done, is about five or six men assembling the mansaf once we had finished cooking it. And that is just a tradition where the women make the food and then the men assemble it. And there's all different kinds of etiquette that goes into man eating mansaf and preparing mansaf. So for instance, during a mourning period, um, when somebody has had a death in the family, mansaf is usually made by a neighbour or a distant relative and there isn't any kind of ceremony in the process of making it like you can kind of see. Although I would say that it's more common these days to buy mansaf from restaurants and have it delivered. But like this event, when families coming together to celebrate in some way, you will see this kind of ritual. So when you're assembling the mansaf first, you lay down a thin layer of the shrak bread, then you put the rice on top, then you carefully choose cuts of meat and place it around and make sure that it's all evenly distributed and then you add the nuts and if you like you sprinkle some parsley and then you serve it oh, with the shrak on top of course and then when you're all around the, the dish you kind of have your set place on the dish that you eat from you will be handed some sauce and you'll pour the sauce on top of your area oh I missed a bit you pour a little bit of the yogurt sauce on the top of the shark to soften it a little bit. It's also custom for the host to check that you're eating enough and you'll often um, have people pulling apart bits of meat for you and kind of chucking it into your, into your area if you seem like you are not eating enough or you seem reluctant to help yourself. When eating mansaf, traditionally men will stand kind of side by side around the dish and they will put their left hand behind their back and they will eat with their right hand and they will make little balls of rice and jameed and meat. A lot of people still choose to eat from the actual dish even if they're using a spoon. Even older generations and definitely with more male dominated events people will use their hand to eat the meat and they make these little balls and I think there's some kind of competition with who can make the best mansaf ball and they kind of plop it in their mouth without touching their fingers ever because you're all sharing so 
germs. Finally, I want to say thank you to my father-in-law and my husband for teaching me about the different stories and pointing me in the right direction for my research and things. And big thank you to my mother-in-law, Hamati Ummi Shukran Tir for teaching me and for being patient with me while I filmed all day. So finally, Ramadan Kareem, but it's probably already Eid, so Eid Mubarak. Ma'asalaam, bye.